Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzie and welcome to something very special for today's video. Now, you guys probably know me for things like Eve Echoes, Eve Online and a little bit of Infinite Lagrange, but if you know me you should know that I'm just genuinely obsessed with space. So if you show me a video game that's set in space and has spaceships and since she was the captain of a spaceship, I'm going to be all over that like some kind of sci-fi rash. Ultimately, a couple of weeks ago I was contacted by the folks at Cernatech, the developers of an upcoming game called Tri on at Space Story. They invited me to check the game out. I'm not being paid for this content, but I did get a download version, a download code for the Steam version of this game, so full disclosure on that one. But you guys know, if I get given something for free, or even if I'm paid for something, my integrity states my captain's code of conduct, which is available to view on my Discord, states that I will always give a completely fair, unbiased opinion, or unbiased by the fact that I've received a copy or whatever. Always my own personal opinion. This game genuinely has really impressed me. It is available to wishlist on Steam. It will be launching on April 28th. I've played a lot of rounds of this already and I suck so badly at this, but I wanted to show you guys what it's all about and give you a feel for it. So I'm gonna basically just jump in and have sort of a go at this, doing another run here in Trigon Space Story to showcase what it's all about. And yes, I'm keeping it on easy mode. That's how much I suck. I cannot get past basically the first chapter currently. Roguelike games just are, oh, they, they tend to crap all over me, but hey, let's jump in and showcase what this is all about. And it's going to be a bit of story time as well, because there's a lot of stuff that you see coming up on screen. Now, what entices me here as well is that you can see right away at the start here, there's a whole load of new spaceships that I can't access yet. I know that you get these and the different races by getting further into the campaign. Um, you can unlock those and then do runs with them as well. And here you can see I've got my crew, there's my pilot, I've got my hyperdrive operator, and I've got an engineer, and I can hire more crew to my ship in time. Two starting weapons, a twin plasma turret, and a thunderbolt rocket launcher, and I'm going to be firing, uh, flying the Centennial Hawk. Badly worn exterior, peeling paint, the smell of burnt wiring and cheap oil. These words describe the ship in a nutshell. This model was created during the times of major human expansion into space. Cheap repair parts, easy and high quality assembly became the winning arguments for humanity's fast evolution and showed uh, who showed exceptional adaptability to harsh conditions. So let's jump in. Now the game's going to throw a lot of information at you right off the bat. There is a tutorial, but I'm talking about like the lore and the backstory. A lot of stuff just gets thrown at you, and you're supposed to n not necessarily know who all these factions are, but figure it out as you go. So after shaking off another Venator patrol, you are trying to understand what's going on. The local communication hub makes it clear that there's a bounty on your head. It would be a good idea to find a safe place, and a place until the dust settles. Your friend Ronnie from the asteroid belt knows best how to go to ground. And straight off, there's our first mission. So we can go into our map and you'll be able to see where your missions are. You can have a look around this um, and sort of get a feel for how big this game actually is. Oh my goodness, it's huge. Um, and you've got all your controls and commands and everything is all down here as well. You can go into management. As you fly through the game, you're going to earn credits, you're going to have scrap, you're going to need food and fuel to keep your ship running, all this kind of thing here. And you can then upgrade things like how much power your ship puts out, the shields, the hyperdrive, med bay, uh, life support modules and armory modules. You can kind of figure out what you want to do to upgrade your ship. You can look at your crew and see what's going on here. New stuff in the cargo hold. I think the best thing to do at this point though is kind of just jump in. You can see here at the bottom left, I can take points out of different systems, like I could get some out of my hyperdrive to activate my med bay. Right now I don't need the med bay though, so I'm quite happy with that as it is. I'm also not going to spend any of my scrap or that just yet because, <laughs> yeah, I'd rather see how things go first of all. And your staff, you can actually click and move them around, so if your ship's systems get damaged they can repair, if they need to come into the med bay to heal they can do, that kind of thing. Obviously hyper, uh, hyperdrive operation here, um, he's going to be better standing in my hyperdrive. Same here with my pilot is going to be better it currently based in the uh, in the cockpit at the front of the ship there, in the, whatever you want to call it, the bridge. So let's start moving. You can see when I move up here in the top I'm losing some of my fuel and food. My ship, my crew are going to be eating food and my ship is using fuel every time I jump. Now I want to be heading towards this place here, that looks the wrong way to go, come on. Can we not go this way yet prior? No, crikey, it really is that, that, that long way. Sometimes I've spawned literally right next to the, God, the game's beautiful as well. 
Anyway, let's move into our second system. Does anything happen? Yes. Upon arrival, you notice a suspicious, solitary, hand-cut asteroid. You fly closer and stumble upon a pirate ship lying in ambush. Yay! Right at the start. Basically, no upgrades. Right. We're going to take our twin plasma turret and I'm going to start shooting at their shield generator and it's going to be on auto fire mode as is our uh, Thunderbolt rocket launcher here also going to be shooting at those. At this point in the game most of this is just kind of let it auto do its thing. You can see I couldn't warp away if I wanted to because right now well I don't have you know the hyperdrive is still charging. I start taking damage on my ship you can see there my uh, gunnery systems took a little bit of a beating. Well, that's my airlock system taking a bit of a beating as well. If I do want to pull away I could do so now, now the hyperdrive is charged, I could run, however my shields and my hull seem to be holding out pretty okay, they've taken a lot more damage than I have at this point, although, oh we've got intruders, oh we've got intruders and we've got a fire. So let's move this guy through here as well and see if we can get to safety, get to safety, come on Sophia, get to safety, you've leveled up and I don't care, you're gonna die, I can't click on you, can't click on you, there we go, now she's been knocked out and we're on fire, let's bring the pilot in as well, this is not a great start to a run. That is my mechanic already dead um, due to borders just utterly obliterating me. And things aren't auto-firing. Why aren't we auto-firing? That's, that's not good. Oh, and the weapon systems are out and everyone's about to die. When I told you this game was difficult, I really wasn't kidding. I'm not going to be able to walk away either because my pilot's not at the bridge and I don't have the hyperdrive charged anymore. That's uncharging because the guy's not there, so screw him. <laughs> Looks like we're just going to start another run almost instantly. My goodness, what a horrific start to the game that was there. My pilot, actually where even is he? He's been teleported across to the enemy ship. There he is. Oh my goodness, what a horrific start to the run that was. Um, oh, he's killed everyone, but I can't get back. Oh no, there we are. He's about to get murdered by the crew. There we go, down he goes. And... <laughs> Oh, that was awful. That was possibly the worst run I've ever done. So we're going to jump straight back in. We're going to try another run. I don't know if I'll edit that out in post or if I'm just going to kind of keep going this one. Same story to start off with here. Something's up. Let's have a look. Oh, we are instantly right next to the starting system. Cool, so we can jump across to our asteroid belt here and find out what's going on. And I recommend doing this because there's a really good point at the start here. On your way to the asteroid belt, it becomes clear that there is something wrong here. The station is a silent, no ships in view. You notice strange emissions on your sensors that emanate from a waste recycling module. Where is everyone? I need to find Ronnie in this whole mess stat. I can send one of the crew members or I can send an experienced engineer. I'm going to send the engineer. You send an experienced engineer to figure everything out on site. The engineer walks through the station along its technical tunnels, describing to you strange triangles on the wall. Later, he finds a Terticon in an irradiated location and brings it on board. So, we've just earned some scrap and some supplies. Some food in the form of hamburgers. The asteroid turned out to be a slaughterhouse. The answers are hidden inside a lucky ticket, which is our Terticon. According to the signs on its body, its number is 213114. It'll be hard to turn it on, half of its brains have burnt out. You'll need to find someone who can restart it, despite the ban. It would be nice to find a Terticon that has already reconsidered its life. It looks like you'll need to go to a pirate station. There's no other place where you'll be able to find a Terticon which can turn another robot on for money. So into the pirate's den. It's also worth noting, when you come to different systems, you get these different rules, different things will apply to you. Like here I'm in a black hole, which I think means it takes more fuel, yeah, two fuel for me to fly away from it, rather than just one. I can't see any stations around here annoyingly either for upgrades, because I don't want to go back. Uh, actually, no, that's not true. I do want to go back just yet. Um, it's the pirates it's later on that I don't want to jump into before some upgrades. So we come to our next system. A pirate station. They're usually disguised as being uninhabited. If it hadn't been for your old connections, you probably would have had to look for it much longer. Approaching the station, you begin to feel a sense of adventure. The station is in chaos, gambling, forbidden treasure, legal goods. Somewhere in the mess must be a Terticon hacker you're looking for, but where to begin your search? I'm going to talk to smugglers this time. The local smugglers are quite outgoing. After the change of government, they were liberated under an amnesty of any past legal problems. One of the Raki smugglers invites you in. You approach the trader with caution. You've heard that Raki became more sociable and accommodating when they're away from their kin, but you keep your hand on your holster nevertheless. Come on, come good friend. Raksan doesn't bite. I'm but an honest Raki trader. A regular exchange. You give me something, I give you something. 
Naraki explains to you how the trade is done and calls it a surprise mechanics. Yeah, it's a loot box. You buy a weapon at an absolutely bargain price, however you'll never know beforehand what weapon you're going to get. Yeah, let's buy it. I, I, I'm, I'm in a gambling mood. You buy the surprise and get your weapon. You ask the Raki where you get the weapon knocked into shape and learn the address and experience Terticon mechanic. Excellent. Ooh, it's a mining cutter. Yeah, that's pretty much useless. I had 750 credits, that was nearly all of my credits. What a terrible start I'm having again. This is easy mode. At the address, you find a small workshop of an old Terticon. He immediately figures out why you're here and demands a pretty penny for lucky ticket. Ronnie's out there somewhere and he needs help. Should you really pay this greedy piece of iron, or should you try something else? Uh, you know what? I'm going to get my engineer to check the price. My engineer is shocked at the price. He raises some good arguments and proves that the repairs could be done much cheaper. The Terticon reluctantly agrees and offers you help for next to nothing. <laughs> Lucky Ticket bounces back. It tells you all about the events at the station. Two Venator ships enslaved almost everyone there. Anyone who resisted was killed on sight. The lucky guy regrets having committed suicide. The very thought that it feels regret about a successful suicide sounds odd. However, it didn't want to lose its memory unit, so it chose to burn itself in the recycling module when no one was likely to stick their nose in. Popo, what a name, and here we have our new unit, Terticon. Lucky Ticket. Terticons are really cool because they can go into areas of your ship that are in vacuum and repair them really quite nicely. They're basically little, like, spheroid machines. Oh, and our mechanic has leveled up. We're going to go with Lucky so that she avoids taking damage if she gets shot at. Okay, nothing else really here to do in system. I would really like to try and find a space station nearby because I'd like to do some upgrades and repairs. Oh, and we're using four, f uh, four food at a time. Your sensors are picking up a strange signal. It's too difficult to decipher its structure, but you trace its origin. A mysterious signal in the Atari sector? This could be a trap. Fly to the source of the signal. You're circling the sector. The bloody signal keeps moving. After a couple of hours of fruitless searching, you return to your route. You've only wasted fuel here. So, I've just lost some fuel, but I did get some experience. Cool, let's add Lucky to the captain so he avoids taking some damage. And let's have a look here. It's gonna be Lucky again. Hulk's nice, but mm, I just I, I prefer damage reduction to just more health. The more health can come later. Still nothing overly exciting, so let's jump between some more systems and see what we can find. Reminds me a lot, by the way, of Faster Than Light FTL if you've ever played that. Travelling through the system, you stumble upon a planet beneath a strange glass dome. There's peace and tranquility on the planet, and the inhabitants have no idea that space flight even exists. Maybe it'd be best not to disturb them. Explore the dome from the outside. Upon examining the dome in detail, you realise that the ancient Atari installed it before even meeting the humans. Apparently this was how they were trying to learn more about humans before they could venture into space. So weird, you collect valuable data and leave the sector. Ooh, nice amount of credits and some supplies. That'll keep me going. But basically, at this point, I'm just jumping around, examining these systems, seeing what's in them, getting some more scrap and things like this so I can look into upgrades. In fact, oh, it's even SOS signal. Okay, let's check the source. You determine the coordinates and charge the hyperdrive. Off we go. Do we find anything interesting there? Or is that just going to be a mini quest? It's going to be a mini quest. So if we open up our management here, I think I probably want a bit more in... <laughs> Food is okay at the moment, fuel's okay at the moment. Let's add just a little bit to our generator so I've got a bit of freedom. Like, for example, I can switch on the med bay and turn it off if I need to, if I need to redirect power elsewhere. But right now, there's nowhere else to redirect power to. Cool. Let's have a look at the sensors, though. Can I upgrade those at all? Because I think upgrading sensors, no, nah, too much. It'll allow me to see stations on the map, which can be really, really helpful early on. Still looking for a space station, so I'm just going to be hopping around until eventually we find one. Hopefully there is even one in this sector. That would really suck if we didn't. There's an enemy ship waiting for me in the system. This will be a tough fight, but then again, are they ever easy? Yes, yes, I can promise you that some of the fights in this game are really easy. Every fight brings you close to your goal, and this one is no exception. Awesome, let's get the auto target on there. Again, oh, this is another one that has the bloody teleporters where they decide they're going to shoot at you. So actually, maybe a better bet is to shoot at the teleporter chamber instead. And we're just going to open fire and abs... Oh, crikey. Nice shot there on the hull. There we go. Yeah, we're bringing this down okay. I just want to keep an eye open for... Yeah, there we go. That's what I thought. Shields. Guy's going to need to get in here and start repairing that. He'll probably take some damage while he's in here. There we go. Yeah, taking a hit there. Only two damage, though. Not too bad. And the hull of the enemy ship's on three. 
Oh yeah, there we go. Down they go. Nice and easy. Death to the pirates. Cool, what do we get? You destroy the enemy ship and teach them a lesson. On second thoughts, if no one survives, there's no one to teach the lesson to. Load more credits, a bit of scrap, some fuel, and some human fuel food. Cool. It's not exactly what I wanted, but we're going in the right direction. Ah, we finally have a station. Cool. So let's jump into this system, where we now have access to a space station. Ooh. Very cool looking one. Greetings, Salkai. I trade in this system to feed our poor colony. I offer a good exchange rate for resources. Atari resources are the best. Sure. Okay. Let's jump down to the station. Now, when you're in a station like this, you have access to trade, to the bar, and to the ship mechanics website. So you can come in here in the shipyard, and we can upgrade stuff here. Rather than using scrap, you use your credits to upgrade things. We have trade where you can sell any of the stuff you don't want, like, for example, a useless mining cutter. Um, and you can buy stuff like scrap and different weapons if you think that those look interesting. And even in the bar, you can then hire more crew. So who do we have here? We've got a pilot, um, a hyperdrive operator, a medic, that's interesting, and a weapons operator. Ooh, weapons operator is tempting. And I will have the credits for it. So yeah, let's grab a weapons uh, weapons operator. And how, how much does that leave him with? 367. Okay, so let's come through here. 420, it's not enough to upgrade any of this stuff here. I could buy a teleporter. The drone control module's nice, but I don't have any drones yet. Uh, 161 would take me to about 400. I'm not going to be able to afford any decent weapons for that. Prometheus rocket launcher. No, but I am only on six Speedfire rockets, so I should probably stock up on some of them while I'm here. There we are, Speedfire rockets. You hold the shift key and tap. There we are. Get all of those. Buy those for 18. Food, fuel. I could probably grab a couple of fuel into there as well, and I'll hold on to the rest for now. Let's repair, actually, 90. Yeah, full repairs. Let's get my hull all the way up. And back out into space we go. Cool, so let's jump back into space. Um, the amount of scrap I have is not going to be enough to do anything there either. I'm going to really need to upgrade that life support module, though, because I'm going to be chewing through food. Yeah, five food a time. Right, let's have a look around, see if I can get some more scrap and some more credits before we move on with the storyline and figure out what's going on there. Oh, one of the Atari ambassadors hails you. He asks you to deliver an important message to an ambassador in the next sector. Judging from his expression, he's holding something back. Get my Atari crew member to agree. Thank goodness we just bought an Atari crew member. You hire and open a data channel. The Atari is experimenting with the equipment and the ambassador's ship suddenly explodes. You're shocked, but the Atari assures you it was a spy and it'd be best to get the hell out of there as soon as possible. Oh, we've got some drone replicants, nice. So I could actually go for the drone module now. It would be sort of semi-useful. Not great in and of itself, but... <laughs> mm. Interesting to, you know, just come across an ambassador who turns out to be a spy and my Atari assures me that everything's okay. Yeah, cool. See how that all goes. <laughs> I'm sure that won't bite me in the backside later. A huge supermarket station is located in the system. This would be a great place to restock your resources and pick up some useful things on sale. Yeah, let's uh, take your crew and go shopping and split up. You and your crew split up and start picking through the goods. At the exit, you reunite with the crew and find that one member is missing. Oh god. A couple of hours later, you see one of your companions dragging some kind of heavy metallic structure. It's very easy to get lost in a store such as this. You can uh, decide to wait for the latecomer at the exit. A couple of hours later, you see one of your companions dragging the metallic structure. It's a Thunderbolt rocket launcher and 404 credits. They stole it. They stole it and actually apparently emptied the register as well. Now, I don't have enough to activate this yet. I don't think. It's going to be 80 scrap. I've only got 35. We could look at going back. I'm doing that Thunderbolt rocket launcher we've got there. I've already got a Thunderbolt rocket launcher here. Let's add it anyway for the time being. Um, you see it's offline at the moment because I don't have enough energy. You can see I've got three energy, uh, two bars there, one bar here, powered by the three there. I can't activate this one because there's not enough. I can't even take out of other systems. I need to upgrade that to have the fourth. Okay, I think then maybe we should start moving back towards our station and seeing what we can do here. Anything happening in this system? Ooh, there's a Tenticon station in the system, except that right now there's a war raging between the Atari and human gangs. Both are seeking your help. They want you to deal with the opponents and recover valuable supplies from the station. Um, turn on the defense system for the Tenticon station. Yeah. 
great. The Turticon asks you to punish both gangs for their treacherous occupation of their station. You allow it to use the station console and activate the security protocols. The defense system annihilates both gangs and now you can take a breath. Why, why choose who to side with when I can side with no one and just win and claim all of this? Ooh, is that a drone? Yes, we have a drone. And we got a level up out of that as well for our... That's our weapons operator, who really should be standing. Oh, no, 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 no. Accidentally opened an airlock. That wasn't good. There we are, let's heal you up in the med bay. Our weapons operator really should be standing, I, I get this feeling, in the weapons operation bay. That just seems like a good place for him to be. Uh, assault body armor, so he takes a little bit less damage. Cool. Nothing else I can really do at this point. So we are going to jump back to the station here. Oh, off we go. How much did I need for that upgrade? Because if I go for scrap, it's gonna cost me 80, so I'd need another 45. Okay, that's possibly doable. If we go into the shipyard to buy it, otherwise it's gonna be 560. Ask great with buy it, 560. There we are, it leaves me 184. Again, anything interesting or worth trading at this point? And uh, no, not. Really? Ah, yes, I was going to buy the drone upgrades. Supplies, supplies, that's two different things there. Oh no, I don't have enough for the drone control module anymore. <laughs> it takes me down to minus 16. Okay, let's sell some food. I'm sure, that's fine. Sell some food. <laughs> sell some food to buy some drones. Yeah, that seems like a, a solid plan, doesn't it? Okay, let's come out of the station. Now we can go into management. Let's take the medbay offline for the time being to put the armory module on. Let's add in the speed fire rockets there. Ooh, let's take the hyperdrive down by one. Let's activate the drone control module. I need to actually activate that, don't I? Need to go into the cargo hold and put a drone in the drone control module. Cool, which I can then activate using these drone replicants. Let's add some power to that, so that's now active as well. It's a little bit risky, but screw it. I think it is time for us now to move towards actually going into the next sector. I didn't check if I'm even going in the right direction here, but eh, we'll see how we're doing. Asteroids, you receive a request for a job, a courier job in the system. Ask for delivery terms. Mm, yeah, let's help transport. I love that you can attack the system. You know, hey, would you carry our ashes? Yeah, sure. Um, or I can just attack you. Why, why would I do that? Uh, no, it's that side I need to be going. Okay, so let's go down to Alzir. Nope. Can I not go down to Alzir? Yes, I can. Good, I just wasn't clicking on it properly. And we're just going to make our way across. You don't know what's waiting for you on the other side. The signal is too complex and decide that the risk may be worth it. Local system is a graveyard of ships. There's a huge number of massive hulls from the different ages of this galaxy. It's an amazing sight to behold. Might be a good idea to explore the place. Yeah, let's, let's have a look. We decide to switch from the signal for a while and search the ships from different eras. You find a lot of useful gadgets for flying, maps of different systems and old weapons. Some of your finds will only do for scrap, but at the same time your crew has become more encouraged for fresh adventures. I, I like scrap. Scrap is good. It should allow me, actually, importantly now, to upgrade the reactor. Haha! -ha! So now we can have all of our systems online. Okay, let's now move down to Terrabellum. And we're going to work our way to the gate out of this sector and try and get through the Guardian into Sector 2. Now, Sector 1 is usually I'm uh, the sector I'm okay with. I usually start to really suck once I hit Sector 2. Stuff there just absolutely wrecks me. Um, but hey, you just saw me get, you know, absolutely wrecked early on. Let's protect the Turticons. Protect them. Yeah. Our friends, the Mechanical Turticons. Oh boy, this may not have been a smart move. Okay, so we can take the life support module off. No, we need that for oxygen. We can take the hyperdrive down by one for now to activate the drone. I'm then going to shoot central, shoot central, shoot central. Let's just take those shields all the way down and the drone is just going to do its thing. There we are, the drone's off doing damage. And who the heck would you look at that? Ooh, how did they, how did they get the hull all the way back up? Oh, is this one of those ones where it's multiple ships? Yes, it's multiple ships, but that's fine. We're doing okay. I do need to move Lucky Ticket though, possibly to the med bay. Oh, and everything needs to be clicked again for, oh no, why, why are you doing that? Don't, no, stealth, go away. How do I shoot you? There we are, now it's back. Um, again, we're gonna go for the weapon systems this time, shoot everything there, activate the drone, 
And off we go. I've taken a tiny bit of hull damage here, and we're absolutely obliterating them. Oh, that feels good. Down go two ships. What do we get for that? Clearly, that's going to be some awesome stuff. The Terticons are safe, and they thank you for your help. They repair your ship, <laughs> and upgrade a few of its systems. Then you leave the station and continue on your way. Nice, I've got the armory module upgraded, hull repaired, I've got a load of credits and scrap, a blaster, and some shockwave EMPs. Ooh, and everyone's encouraged, that's so cool. Happy with that. Before we move systems, let's get everything on the ship back up to scratch. No point in putting additional power there, but I can shove that into the drone for the time being. Cool. That was nice. I like it when good things happen. Let's move into this system now, where we're going to be attacked by whoever is guarding the gate to the next sector. Upon arriving in the system, you see a huge Iraqi ship. It seems to be guarding the gates in the sector. You gather your thoughts and turn on the transmitter to reach an agreement with their captain. In response, there is only silence. The giant ship readies for action. Battle is inevitable. Yes, as is my victory. So we are going to shoot everything we have into their shields, and the drone, of course, is going to do its thing. Now our captain, a little bit of damage there on him, 99, I'm fine with that. Let's keep, oh, crikey, 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 let's move away. Let's open the doors here at the back. Oh man, this is not good, this is not good, this is not good, this is not good, I have been boarded. Not good at all, we're doing very little damage across there. Let us move to a safe place. Let's go back to the system we were previously in. I know we've still got two guys on the ship. We've still got two guys on the ship. You ah! successfully jumped out of the battle area. Let's move him. Hopefully we don't come under attack immediately. Cool. Let's move everyone down this way and watch as my entire crew get annihilated by these guys. The only problem with Terticons, by the way, is that they cannot... Um, here we are. Terticons cannot um, fight in combat. So we're just going to suffocate these guys by opening the airlock doors, sucking all the air out, and we're just going to wait for them. We're just going to wait for them to die. They're not going to run through the doors, apparently. They haven't figured they can run through the doors. There we are. And once this guy goes down... <laughs> close the airlock doors so that we can get back to work. Okay, Maxim, our pilot can go back up to the front there. Let's move Sophia down into the uh, sensor bay. Earl was our hyperdrive operator. Ooh, ooh, we had an actual hull breach as well. Okay, let's move the Terticon in there. You're a weapons operator, so you need to come down to weapons operation. There we go. See, the Terticon doesn't take any damage for being in a vacuum, which is pretty cool. Allows me to repair this, no trouble. I can then move quickly him into here. No, not you. Sorry. Sorry, I clicked the wrong people. Ugh. Terrible. You can zoom in a little bit, by the way. Um, if, like me, you are just terrible at clicking stuff. And there we are. We're all repaired. Let's move you back up to shields so you can keep an eye on that. In fact, let's put you into the med bay just to top up your health to that last. Do There we go. Cool. And back in we go. Okay, right. Let's move back into that combat. They're down a couple of crew members, hopefully, at this point. I don't know if they've re-armed in that time. They shouldn't have done, that would be really unfair. But we are going to 100% keep shooting at their teleporter. Because screw that thing. Teleporters are bad, we don't like teleporters. There we go. Oh, hull breach. And they're teleporting more people in again. So let's move Earl, come up here. Earl, come on, up here, please. We can open all of this. Suffocate this guy. I don't know if he's going to break my doors down, at least he's going to die doing it. Oh, you're not on auto fire, that, that would help as well. There we go. We're repairing our shield systems here. We're taking a lot of damage though. But crikey, teleporters offline. Good. Good. No more of those bloody teleporters. Um, we have a hull breach though somewhere I can see. Where is that hull breach? Because oxygen is low. Oh no, it's just the life support module is offline. Okay, so let's get lucky ticket down to the life support module. I'm going to close off the doors now. There we go. I should be able to repair that nice and quickly because we're running out of oxygen. Quickly! Let's open up doors to get some airflow. There we go. Oh man, we're out of rockets. We are out of rockets. 
I'm gonna die again, aren't I? I'm literally about to die again. Um, but at least the life support is back online. The shields are nearly back online. Um, yeah, there we are, the shields are now okay. Cool, we're repairing our systems. Just the un unfortunate side effect here is that basically, I'm out of ammunition. So I can launch a drone, which I've completely forgotten to do. Captain at death's door. Now let's move you down to this. That's gonna affect my hyperdrive, but I can't run out of here if I need to, but they can't teleport on and they're dead. Huzzah, we survived. Oh man, we survived. You destroy the ship and grab everything you can before leaving the system. A lot of nice rewards there, which is good because I'm going to need all of those rewards. Uh, once my captain's healed back up, I think we're going to go back to the station that we were previously at, rearm, repair, and get a load of stuff sorted. Um, and then from there, well, I will continue on into Sector 2. Now, I don't really want to be showing much more than this at this point in time. One, because I absolutely suck once we get further than this. Um, and two, just because I think that if you enjoy this game, if you're enjoying watching this, then you really should give it a try. It's a great little game. I'm thoroughly enjoying this. I really, really do suck at it. But hey, maybe you'll do better. And if you do, I would love to hear your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below and to hear how you guys get on with this. It reminds me a lot of Crying Sons, which I'm sure you know as well. It's a game that I thoroughly enjoy both on mobile and on Steam. Um, but this one here, Trigon, A Space Story, give this a go. I genuinely recommend this. It's a lot of fun. The story is really interesting. What starts off as basically a, you're on the run. Why are you on the run? Then becomes a, the guy that you were supposed to be, you know, trying to find to help you with all of this, he doesn't actually seem quite as clued up as you would have hoped he would be, and you have all these little problems and things that need to be solved, and oh my goodness, it just keeps going as a story. The story gets so good in this, and I really recommend, if you like story-based games, if you're not, uh, you know, not against the whole using a, you know, playing a, a roguelike game, I know some people really hate roguelikes, um, this one I genuinely feel is a really good investment, well worth the time and giving it a, a check out. Anyway folks, that's all from me for today. I'm going to repair up and then keep going on this one. Let me know how you get on. Let me know what you think of this kind of game. I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions in the comments section down below. Otherwise, thanks for watching, happy sailing, and, well, good luck!